welcome to the Tiger Prism Billing Port training webinar. We're going to be covering the billing port and what billing ports can offer you within Tiger Prism. So the first thing we're going to look at is what is a billing port. So why would we want to import our bills into Tiger Prism? Tiger Prism, as it stands, all of you will have Tiger Prism and it will allow you to monitor and provide analysis from your unified communication or traditional PBX. What bill imports will allow you to do is allow your organization to fully analyze all of your telephony activity and expenditure. So what Tiger Prism can do is it can incorporate either a mobile bill and or a PSDN activity bill into the system. And this is what we call bill imports. So this means that data can be imported alongside with your collaboration activity or CDR activity or SMDR activity from your PBX. And it would also allow you to do additional reporting and analysis on things like speech usage from your mobile bill or your PSDN or from your mobile bill. We can look at things like data usage, roaming, non-roaming costs, SMS and MMS costs. So if you are a company that use a lot of mobiles, then you can use Tiger Prism to look at your usage. What you'll need to do though is make sure that the mobile numbers and PSTN numbers are associated to departments. So you can then break down costs from your mobile or PSTN providers and it will allow you to generate reports to encompass all activity from all users. So we will define a user's extension number or URI and their mobile number. And this will then allow you to look at all of the data that person has made. So for example, if you are giving out landlines to your home workers, it may be that you want to incorporate the home workers landline and their extension number while they're in the office to give a single cost for that person. We will only be able to import data from vendors that allow an exportable itemization in an electronic file. This will be normally exportable from the vendor or email from the vendor on a monthly billing cycle. Although it could be a weekly, it could be a daily. That will be up to the vendor to decide how often we can get that information. What we will do though is on a case by case basis, we will assess the data and provide feedback on each vendor's output to then give you a bit more information on what you will get from your data. We can support such data from mobile vendors, itemization, PSDN itemization. It could be that you run a call center and you have SMS gateways and you want to look at your itemization from that and analyze that. So we could even take SMS itemizations. It could be fax servers itemizations. So if you've got a third party that you use to send all your faxes, maybe you'd like to bring all that data into Tiger Prism to allow you to look at that information, as well as ISDN bills and BT1 bills. So that's what a bill import allows you to do. So what information is required? So when you go and talk to your vendors, these will be the minimum amounts of information we would require for Tiger to successfully import data into Tiger Prism. So each row must contain a billing record with the minimum fields that you see here on the screen. So what we mean is the electronic file that they'll provide must be a record per call or per line of information that we need to import. So for that, we would need a endpoint number. So this will be a number that we could assign back into the directory or back to a user. We would then need to know what the person has dialed. Now, this could be a fax number, this could be data, an MMS, it could be whatever they've dialed, but we just need some form of number that they've dialed. We would then need to have a duration. So this must contain how long the call lasted. Now, obviously for things like SMS, they don't have a duration, but just need a duration field for it. So although it may be 0000 for SMS calls, we just need that information. Now the field can be formatted though for duration in many different ways. It could be seconds, it could be minutes and seconds, it could be hours, minutes and seconds. It doesn't matter, we just need to have a duration for that call leg. We would need a cost, so we would have a cost of the call. Now, the cost isn't so important because there are two ways that we can do costings. We can either generate the cost through Tiger or we can take the cost as it is from the vendor. So there are two options here, or you could take the cost from the vendor. So that will be your cost. And then you could bill your end users with a completely different cost if you wanted to. So for example, as we spoke about that, you may have broadband lines in people's homes and they use it for making personal calls. So you may be costed at one pence per minute for national calls, but actually you want to bill your end users at 10 pence per minute. 
it. So you could have a cost, which is what you're paying from your vendor, and then you could have a bill, which is what you're going to charge the person at the other end. So although the cost isn't as important, a cost is a useful thing to have in the bill. And most importantly is the date and time. So we would need to have a date and time of when that billing record or that call started from. So from this, you must be able to download that information from your vendor and place the electronic file in a predefined location on the Tiger server. Now, each customer will have a slightly different location of where it will be downloaded to, but the Tiger engineer, when they set it up, will give full instructions on what you need to do and what you need to rename the file to allow the data to be automatically imported into the Tiger system. As I said, we will go through this though, site by site of where the file goes and what the name of it needs to be. This is because each vendor has a slightly different file format, file name, file type, as you download it from their website, from their FTP site, etc. So that's the information required from the bill import. So what I'm just gonna quickly do is just quickly show you a sample of what bill import data could look like. So I've just loaded up an Excel spreadsheet here. So this is just a sample mobile bill import from a vendor. So from here, we have things like the invoice number, the bill sequence number, the invoice period, the invoice date, the account number, and so on. Then the calling number. So again, this is the number that will end up going into the Tiger directory against the user. A username, but again, this is not that important, and maybe an allocation code. The important thing here though is that we get a dialed number or a destination. Now for things like data calls, so where we get GPRS calls here, we don't get a dialed number, but we will insert a description of data in this call. The other important fields are things like duration and some extra value fields like data and cost of the calls and some other reusable bits of information. Things like, was it a roaming call? Was it a not roaming call, et cetera? So this is the type of information that we would require from a mobile bill import. But again, going back to our previous slide, the minimum fields would be things like the calling number, the call number, the duration, the date, and possibly a cost. So what information needs to go into Tiger to get this to work? Well, we would require the mobile numbers to be added into our Prism directory. So for you to be able to generate a single report, so on my screenshot here, we've got Hugh Sutton. Hugh Sutton has his mobile number here, and he has his extension number here assigned to Hugh Sutton. So if I now run a report on Hugh Sutton, I will get his total cost for his mobile cost calls and the total cost for his desk phone calls. If you don't have the phone number assigned and we import calls from the mobile bill import, you will then be able to run the unknown endpoint report to give you a list of all of the mobile numbers that haven't been assigned to a person within the directory. So we do have tools within Tiger Prism that do give you that information as well. Now, to maintain the tree, you do have two options. You can manually maintain the tree. So you can manually assign these PSDN numbers or mobile numbers to people. Or we can use directory integration to automatically assign the mobile numbers to people and departments, etc. So as long as the source directory contains the person's PSDN number or mobile number, then we can automatically import that information into the directory for you, meaning that all of the information will be kept up to date from your source directory. So this would be things like adding deletions and changes to usernames, or then it may mean that they've moved departments, so we will automatically move them for you. So if you do get information from, say, your mobile bill import provider, these are sort of the type of things that we will be able to get from there. So we'll be able to get things like the endpoint number, the date, the time the call was made, the type of activity. So this is whether it was a GPRS call, an SMS, an MMS, a roaming call. We could get things like dialed number. We could get things like duration. We could get the cost. But as I say, the cost could be calculated by Tiger Prism or the cost could be taken from your file or you could get a hybrid of both. And with mobile GPRS calls, we can also give you things like volume of data. So when you go to analyze this information, it may be you wanna go and look at which users are using high volumes of data over a set period. So within Tiger Prism, we have things like a mobile bill dashboard. So this gives you uh, interactive displays and an overview of your mobile traffic and elements within the dashboard are affected by you choosing your directory level. So within the next minute or so, we'll go and start looking at this dashboard and we will start looking at these fields here to show you what type of information that you can get. So we can get things like the media types, the media data metrics, 
The left hand table shows which departments are spending which amounts on mobile bills. The details party here then breaks down what type of calls they're making. And in number five, there are tabs here that allow you to look at which media types they're using in a graph format. Finally, the other thing that we can look at is departmental mobile bill summaries here, or it could be that we look at a departmental cost summary report. So there are lots of reports available within the standard application that allows you to use the bill import information to generate reports against people. This example here is a mobile bill summary which allows you to break it down by department on how many voice calls on non-roaming data and messages from non-roaming as well as roaming costs here. So it will give you an idea of how much each department is spending on roaming or non-roaming data and messages, allowing you to, as a company, build back the departments, not only the fixed line from your PBXs, you can also build back any external bills that your department may be paying for. So what I'm going to do is now load up Tiger Prism and we're going to go and look at the dashboard first of all, which is the mobile bill dashboard. So within our dashboards, under the management, if you do purchase a mobile bill import, then this dashboard will come available to you here on the left hand side. Once the data has been imported into the system, you'll be able to see things like what types of calls are happening. You'll be able to choose your dates and you'll also be able to choose your directory items here. Now I will come back to directory items in a moment. You'll also be able to change your measures. So maybe you're interested in what durations there are or simply the cost. So this allows us to look on this particular day. So on the 11th of February, there was a spike in cost and it will allow you to then investigate why there was such a spike in cost on that particular day. You can look at your data metrics. So you can look at the volume of data or how much bandwidth was being used. So how many megabytes were being used on those particular days. So on the left hand side here, this will give you a breakdown by department. So to break down by departments, you need to go into your directory item selector here and choose which departments you would like to analyze. So I'm going to select all my sub departments by clicking on the cog and clicking the sub items here. If you want to, you can come into more detail and you can add individual departments or users just by simply dragging and dropping from left to right here. This is the same controller as on other dashboards. So once I click OK, it will now break down my costs per department. So I can see here which departments are spending the most amount of money by cost or by voice cost or by roaming costs. So I can say that this department here spent £372 on calls. So let's go and find out what type of calls they've been making. So I can highlight this department and it will now show me that they've made 132 GPRS calls using 1.6 gigabytes costing the company £35. They've made £33 worth of SMS calls and they've spent £304 on voice calls. So I've got that information here available to me. Now I could go and investigate this using analytics to go and find out why out of the 442 calls did they make £304 worth of calls because that's nearly 75p a call. They shouldn't be using that amount of money on calls, especially if you've got bundled minutes, you would think that the cost shouldn't be so high. You could then look on other departments. And as I said, using the same controllers, if you wanted to, if you want to then investigate more about the very big Corp of America, you can come up to your directory item selector. You could clear everything out of here. You could drag that part in here and you could drag all the sub departments and you can then add in the individuals as well. And you'll notice now that the left hand side will now change to now give me the total here and the breakdown of calls. Having high volume of calls from our sales team is probably a very good thing. So we wouldn't be worried too much about that. So when we look at that cost and the volume of calls, because we can see it's against sales, we wouldn't be worried too much. Making lots of calls and sales is probably a good thing. So that's the mobile bill dashboard. Although you could use any of the dashboards to show information about your bills. All you'd need to do is come into any dashboard and just select your mobile CDR source by selecting the CDR source 
and all of the dashboards will work in the same way as they do before so it's just showing us all our mobile bill import information and not our fixed line but then if I want to include my fixed line as well I can select that and you'll see that my volumes will then change as well from here so it's not just specific dashboards that allow you to use your mobile bill import data you can use it in all of the dashboards that are available here so it could be that you want to look at your top x endpoints and again break this down just on your mobile bill import data so i want to see who my top most expensive users are for my mobile bill imports so i can see this was my most expensive user and they spent 140 pounds on calls and i can come and then look at those calls so I'm just going to go on to analytics and look at what level of information I can see from my mobile bill import and which fields I would use to get my mobile bill import information out. So I'm going to go to analytics, search and legs. And in my columns here, I'm going to add a field called collecting CDR source. And I'm going to add a field called media type. And we'll use these two fields just to start with to filter out some calls. So I'm gonna filter on collecting CDR source and say that I'm only interested on my mobile data. So when I now run it for February, it will only return information from my mobile bill import here. But because I've enabled media type, I'll be able to see whether that call was a GPRS call, an SMS call or a speech call. So I'll be able to tell the difference between whether that call was a SMS or that call was a speech call. How much the calls cost and I could then do things like sort on my cost and go, well, look, that person spent £34 on that call. That person spent £25 on that call. I can then go and say that here that that was £13.58 for some data. We would then go maybe speak to our provider and go, well, we should have a massive bundle of data. Why has that person been charged for data? We should have plenty of data available for everybody. Or it could be something like you're looking at your call data going, well, we're making lots of international calls now. Can we go back to our provider and try and negotiate slightly better rates with the provider? It could be that, you know, you'll look at this call here, this GPRS call, and you click on that call and you want to see what was the volume of data used on that GPRS call. So you could come into here and you could go into things like bandwidth and you'll be able to get the bandwidth used on there. And you can get things like which categories and so on that here that the call broke out onto as well. It could be though that you want to know the bandwidth or the data usage. Again, you can get all of those columns from analytics and like any of the other analytics, you can create widgets to build up information about that. So it could be that you want to know how much you're spending on different call categories. So again, we could maybe get rid of all of these columns here. We'll add back on our media type and we'll add on leg count. And this will then allow you to sum up the total amount of talk time, sum up the total amount of cost and then count how many times that's happened. So this will then tell us that we've had four international MMS calls. We've had 95 international speech calls. You've had 30 MMS calls here to the UK, but you've also had three premium calls as well. So, you know, you could be asking staff, why are they ringing premium rate numbers here? So again, you can use your analytics to look at your data in sort of high level to try and work out where you can start saving money on either your mobile bills or your landline bills. So finally, within here, let's go and look at the reports that are available. So within the reports, again, like with the dashboards, all you would need to do is select your CDR source when generating bills. So if you're a current user of our departmental cost summary report for example here you can continue to use your departmental cost summary report and it will include then your mobile bills and your fixed voice if you don't select them or you select the CDR sources you want to run the bills against and it will work in the same way as your current departmental cost summary report where you can select your levels here and you'll be able to generate the data 
let's select some data and it will then show you total costs for all of your departments and that will include your fixed line so your extension number and the cost for the mobile bill import so again you can then continue to bill everybody from a single place or it could be that you want to run a specific report to go to departmental heads about their departmental mobile summary so again this would only use the mobile data so in your cdr source you would choose which CDR source you would want to run it on if you've got more than one bill import. And we can then go and select the directories. So it could be that, you know, the sales manager wants all of his sales calls for his mobiles sent to him on a monthly basis. So you could select his department and then you can generate that report to show him the costs and so on from his department. Or if you want to then break it down even further, like you can in all the other reports, you can come into your specifics here, choose your department, and then break it down by your levels. So if I look at the sales team now, I can give a breakdown of the sales team here to see who's making all of the calls. And this is exactly what the sales manager wants. So I can now schedule this to be emailed to the sales manager on a monthly basis so he can have a view of his data. So what this means is that you don't have to give them access to the raw data. You're just giving them access to the bits that he needs to see or she needs to see. Thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. And if there's anything else you would like to learn about Tiger Prism and its other modules, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.